other three speakers. Silence. Okay, so then I think then we should move on because uh, we are already uh, a few minutes late. So um, we are now moving on to half an hour of uh, ROP treatment. Uh, so firstly, uh, I think we are going to do uh, the uh, injections talk. Uh, and so um, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Parajat Chandra to uh, tell us about um, anti-VEGEPs anti uh, for ROP. Uh, Dr. Parajat, please. Is my screen visible? <laughs> yes, Parajat. Uh, so thank you for this uh, talk. Uh, I like talk, talking about anti-VEGF drugs uh, in ROP. So I have no financial interest in these uh, drugs. So this is typically how a case of aggressive ROP used to look like uh, following laser a few years back. And uh, if you are shown me this photograph um, a few years back, I've been very happy and would have you know, complimented the person who did such a nice laser in a case of aggressive ROP, which uh, led the you know, disease to go away. But you know, there are a lot of problems with this photograph if I look at it in 2023. So there's a problem of limited visual field, tubular vision, poor macular perfusion, and there's a risk of high myopia. So all these problems are there, especially when now much better treatment modalities are now available. So there's no doubt about it that anti vegf over the last few years has emerged as the first line treatment of zone one ROP. There are several advantages like rapid ROP regression, there's retinal revascularization, which will enable better visual field, better focal structure, and of course, there are lesser refractive changes. And if you look at it, it's a much faster procedure. It causes much less pain, and obviously a more stable baby during the procedure if you compare it with laser. So we published this large series of aggressive posterior ROP, and there's a review if you want to look forward to it. So the Rainbow study was a landmark trial which appeared a few years back. It was a study in 225 babies which compared different doses of ranizumab with laser and found a significant benefit in the 0.2 milligram group when compared to laser. So this further led uh, to the European Union and the European Commission to uh, approve ranizumab for the treatment of ROP. And therefore it emerged as the first and only licensed pharmacological treatment as an alternative laser in ROP. Very recently, a few days back only, ILIA or Aflibercept has also been approved as the first pharmacological treatment for ROP, which has been approved by the FDA. So this was on the basis of the Firefly and the Butterfly studies, which are ongoing. And a quick look at the Firefly studies, which was a randomized clinical trial published last year, shows that they compared one-fourth the dose of Aflibercept uh, with laser in its two-to-one randomized clinical trial over 24 weeks and across 27 countries, and they found a uh, comparable treatment benefit of faithful percept as compared to laser. However, the non-feriority could not be established statistically. So what are the current usage scenarios when you use anti vegfs nowadays? So what I'm trying to show you here is two photographs of the right and left eye of a child coming with aggressive posterior ROP. And if you see here, the pupil is not dilating and a closer look will reveal that it's got a lot of neovascularization at the pupillary area, which is preventing this pupil from dilating. So it's very difficult in this scenario to do laser or surgery or any other procedure in these eyes. However, if you give an intravitreal anti injection, you just see in three days, magically, all of this uh, neovascularization disappears. And the pupil dilates very well. So now you can go ahead and do laser or surgery, or whatever treatment you want. And obviously the response to anti vegf will be much dramatic in this guy, kind of eyes with aggressive ROP, which will also lead to superior disease regression. This is typically how a case of zone one ROP would look like or aggressive ROP. And if you get a newcomer to go ahead and decide where to laser this, it's a problem. There's just a bunch of loops that you see. The demarcation is not very clear. It's not very clear where the stage is. It's also not very clear where the vascularized and the avascularized retina are unless you decide to do an angiography. So how much to laser? And where is the macula? Is it vascularized, not vascularized? Very difficult to comment on all these. And uh, if you use anti vegf in this uh, case, obviously we know that the response will be much better. And it takes care of all these doubts and dilemmas which were there when you had to decide to laser. And obviously you really can't go ahead and laser 
till the posterior pole here, as a lot of visual field will be lost. So let's see how anti-VEGF works in these cases. So we published a last series of cases of our uh, clinical profile and management. This is paper published uh, last year. If you want to have a look, you can go ahead and have it. Uh, so this is typically a case of zone one posterior ROP, which basically means it's even uh, the fovea is not vascularized in these cases. And this is very small areas there, which are marked with the white line. So what happens if you inject anti-VEGF in this eyes? If you see, this is what it looks like at six weeks post-injection. What you can appreciate here is that the retina has really grown forth. The macula has also vascularized. And now the child will have much better visual field. So this was never possible with laser alone. If you decide to laser this eye in the above two photographs, how much laser will you do? And even if you decide to laser, what will the field which will be less? And obviously the macula is not also vascularized. So the advantage you get with anti vegf in these eyes is absolutely dramatic. And this is uh, uh, never possible with laser before. Let me show you another case scenario. So, you know, this case is there and we injected anti vegf in the size. What I'm trying to show you here is again the case of zone and posterior ROP. And what you see here is there's a uh, tractional detachment occurring at the posterior pole. You can see hardly any vascularization is there. There is some preatal hemorrhages uh, at the posterior pole, but no retina is really seen. So what will you do in these cases? So you inject it in these cases and see at six weeks, you see uh, the retina has vascularized and you can see the disc, the new vascularization has melted away and you see that the tractional detachment is also gone. And you can see the white tissue which the arrow is pointing to, that is the posterior vitreous detachment has happened and has you know, removed the traction altogether. So surgery was not required and obviously the outcome is very good in these eyes. This is something which I really like to show. Uh, so this is a common scenario uh, which we see in India. The child is already lasered in many places where injection facility is not available or not affordable. And they come to us like this. You can see here that's a case of aggressive ROP, which is already being lasered and continue to progress and go into stage four. And you can appreciate the large amount of neovascularization, which is there. So now this is a very bad scenario. If you go in for surgery alone, then you know uh, uh, you cannot stop it. And maybe the disease will continue to progress despite surgery. There's a high chance of intraoperative bleeding, high chance of postoperative bleeding. And the response can broadly be unpredictable. So this is what happens if you combine an anti-VEGF with surgery. And you see the response is very dramatic. This kind of outcome you could never expect with surgery alone. And the kind of clean picture which you get uh, is absolutely uh, outstanding. So we recommend that you combine um, anti-VEGF with surgery. So this is basically done at the end of the procedure under air. You inject half dose of uh, anti-VEGF uh, under air, interoperatively only. And this is the kind of response you can get. Many people like to use it preoperatively, but again, that's a very selective case scenario. And it's a disease which is rapidly progressing. There's a problem of crunch which can happen and it can close the funnel. So you really don't want to wait that long. And if you combine both in a similar procedure, it works very well. So we published this large series of cases. And if you want to have a look, uh, please go ahead and uh, read these cases out. We also like to use it in some cases of threshold ROP in cases where the response can be a little unpredictable. So you see in this case, we used uh, laser with anti-VEGF. Anti-VEGF is injected the next day after laser. And you see uh, it just melts away. This is just a one week post uh, laser plus injection picture. And you can see it just melts away. So sometimes if you have cases like this and you just decide to laser, we are well aware that it can, disease can continue to progress into stage four ROP as laser needs time to act. Whereas anti vegf works very fast. And if you combine both of these procedures together in selected cases of zone 2 posterior ROP especially, it can work very well. So maybe if you get a case like this, you can give it a try of combining both these treatments and the outcome can be much more predictable. And that is what we want eventually. It doesn't really mean that anti vegf is a magic drug and it will work in all cases of traction and all cases of uh, uh, you know, uh, places where the traction is progressing. So this is typically a case which was referred to us. It was already lasered. It was progressing into stage four ROP. You see here the new vascularization is not so much, but you see the fibrotic component and the traction is much more. So we advise this case for surgery. And uh, however, the referring surgeon decided to inject in this case. And you know what happened was this is what it came back to us after it came back to us one week later. So what I'm trying to show here is that we should not lose the valuable early surgical advantage when we have it. So the case photo in the left is a very good case for surgery right now and not a case for injection. Also not a case for combination treatment because we are well aware that if you inject a case of anti-VEGF, there's something known as a crunch phenomena where it can continue to progress despite uh, uh, you know, your procedure. So wherever surgery works, 
antibiotic might not be the right treatment and surgery might be a better treatment. So it's not a panacea for all these cases. So there are a lot of drugs in the market, bevacizumab, ranizumab, eflibercept now also. So which drug should we be using? So uh, in our experience, all of them work very well. All of them have a dramatic response on the disease process and can really do superior disease regression. So which drug to use? Obviously, uh, all of them are there. So bevacizumab is not approved and we still like to use it in some cases. Ranizumab, and obviously Bevacizumab has a lot of literature also there. Ranizumab is approved in the European Union. IA, as I showed you, is now approved by the FDA. What dose to use? Mostly people are using half dose, adult dose, although there are a lot of drugs, a lot of literature which is there, which is ultra low doses where people are using one four dose, one ten dose, and they're also reporting very good response with those doses as well. But usually in university, people are using half dose, half the adult dose. And obviously, as you saw in the Firefly study, they're using one fourth the dose of Eflibercept. Even the rainbow customized doses of uh, Aranizumab were used in two different doses. How many injections? Usually the one injection is enough, uh, especially in cases of bevacizumab or ilia, where you know which are more longer-acting drugs, and recurrence is a more common ranizumab. But even if it uh, uh, you know uh, recurs and recurs very forcefully, then possibly you might try an injection, which I'll just come to in a while. How to inject? We like to inject in the operation theater. It provides a sterile environment. It provides a more controlled uh, scenario where you can you know uh, uh, put the child in uh, a situation where it's easier to inject under an OT microscope with providing proper magnification. A lot of people like to inject in an ICU settings, in anesterile settings, and I think that should not be recommended. And the correct way to do it, we like, as we like to do it, is in the, in the operation theater. And obviously, we like to inject bilaterally in the same sitting. Obviously, this has to be treated like two separate procedures, which means basically you have to clean drape again. You have to change the gloves. You have to change the, uh, all the equipment so that it can be done in the proper setting. And obviously, two separate injections have to be used. And drug batches, if uh, different, again, it's much preferable. This is another big problem which happens. You know, a lot of these cases are coming for, you know, uh, children which are injected uh, in an ICU setting without proper magnification, without proper sterility. Of course, it's possible in the best of OT scenarios as well, but the likelihood is less when you have proper magnification control over the baby and a more sterile environment to deal with this. So what happens once you inject? So after a while, you know, the retina, as I showed you, continues to grow. Sometimes after a while, it stops growing. And this, the ICROP3 has termed as the peripheral avascular retina or the PAR. So if you have a large peripheral avascular retina and the disease does not recur, then there's a chance that a large peripheral avascular area is still remaining behind and the chance of late reactivation, which has well been reported literature after weeks and months and years. Therefore, uh, if you have a large peripheral vascular retina, which is remaining after 10 to 12 weeks, we suggest you go ahead and laser these areas. I think the biggest problem which we have right now is managing reactivation. So as we are well aware, the effect of the drug finishes off in a few weeks, and then there's a high chance the disease will come back. If Lipercept we still have a longer duration of action when compared to ranizumab, and this last trial showed uh, that uh, uh, there's a high rate of reactivation with ranizumab. So uh, what do you do? So you have to maintain a high index of suspicion that the disease is going to come back. And obviously, four to eight weeks is a critical time. Look for the plus coming back. Look for the rich coming back. Look for flat neovascularization. And it starts to come back, then you need to go ahead and treat these eyes. So we like to do them with laser, but I'll show you some special scenarios. So when should we go for a repeat injection? So as I'm showing you this eye, this eye is having a severe reactivation at six weeks. And you know you need now fast uh, a drug to act on this. If you do laser, it might not work as fast as an injection might do because a lot of neovascularization coming back, a lot of hemorrhages happening in these eyes, a lot of plus disease coming back. This is another scenario where you have lasered as well as injected, but now you see again the disease trying to come back. So obviously there is no more laser you can do. Posterior barrage laser is not an option in a very small vascularized retina. So in this case, possibly another injection would be a good idea to do it and don't let it rise. And if the TRD has happened, then possibly you might have to combine with surgery also. If it reactivates after the second injection, then possibly you would want to switch the drug to a more longer acting agent like bevacizumab, which we like to do in some selected cases. Another scenario of poor uh, 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 regrowth is there. So you see the retina has grown, but it's not grown significantly. And the significant peripheral vascular retina is left at 12 weeks. And possibly if you inject more, there's a chance that it might grow more. So you might consider another injection here. 
This is another case where again you see very poor regrowth has happened if you see at the arrows which are there and it's again reactivating. So now one option is you can do laser, but if why not inject again and let the retina grow further and then possibly if it reactivates again, you might want to do it. And possibly you might also consider switching the agent here because a significant growth response was not seen in the site. So I showed you a lot of case scenarios and uh, I'd just like to highlight here, this is the JSSK program, uh, a very big program of the government of India, which provides free transport diagnostic and treatment to pregnant ladies and children less than one year. So in hospital, we have to basically subscribe to this program. It allows us to provide free injections to a large number of these babies. Uh, so last year, we did around 600 injections, which were given to these babies last year itself. And all these were supported by the huge JSSK program of the government of India, where we are able to provide this quality of care uh, free of cost to these babies. So thank you so much for this opportunity.